On the line, uh, we have a caller. Uh, can you hear me? It's John from Basingstoke. Are you there, John? Hello, yes, Mark. John Ash. John Ash with an E, of course, from Basingstoke. Good to speak to you again this week. Yeah, good to speak to you, John. Now, I've been asking... Uh, excuse me. <coughs> I've been eating a biscuit. I've been asking listeners uh, to let me know uh, if they were around for this uh, this 3... Well, not 3... This 3 p.m. alert that happened yesterday. Now, um, I believe you're calling in because it happened to you, did it? Your phone went off? No, my phone didn't go off. No, no, I was aware of it, and I heard other people receiving it, but no, I didn't receive it because I put my... Well, now, this is this is what I want to complain about, actually. I mean, I've got things to rejoice about, also things to complain about, and what I want to complain about is something on a mobile phone called airplane mode. Right. Now, I've never travelled in an airplane, and I never will travel in an airplane, I have travelled in an aeroplane. Oh, right, gotcha. And I yes. probably will travel in an aeroplane again. Right. But never an airplane. <laughs> so I don't know what this is supposed to mean, airplane mode, but when I go to my mobile phone, there is a little icon of an aeroplane, mm -hmm. and underneath it is written airplane. Anyway, I was told that if I press airplane mode, which mm. should be aeroplane mode, um, then I won't receive this, that I wouldn't receive this alarm. Right. And lo and behold... I didn't receive the alarm, although other people did. Right. However, that doesn't mean that I'm against such alarms. Mm. doesn't mean that I'm for them either. Uh, you're not for or against them, did you say, John? I'm not for or against them in a sort of blanket sense. Mm. I mean blanket in a metaphorical sense, of course. Yeah. Um, I, in some respects, I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. In other respects, I don't think it's a good idea. And I shall elaborate if you like. Mm. Yeah, I mean, of course, airplane is the American spelling of the word, John. And I suppose uh, that's where a lot of the technology comes from. Uh, have you seen a film called Airplane? I have. Hasn't that got an exclamation mark at the end? It, yes, it has. You're correct. Well, if they put an exclamation mark at the end of this airplane word underneath the icon i wouldn't have complained so much i'd have thought i'd have said to myself oh that's an american version of the word you see right okay so you didn't so, so you knew the alarm was coming and you you turned it off now um but then i spent were you around other people when the alarm went went on as it were i was around other people and i can only assume they hadn't themselves turned on their airplane mode which mm. should be spelled aeroplane mode thus they received the alarm but I didn't. Right. So how about if you were on your own, say, and it was a bit windy outside, and you were worried about freak weather, um, would you would you turn the airplane mode off in case there was an alert? Well, now, this is my point. I would indeed. Mm. Because this is why I think they're good things. Mm. If you were in a, an emergency situation, a very difficult situation, and I imagine myself perhaps mountaineering, because I did as a young man, sometimes fantasize about getting into mountaineering. I oh, never right. did it because okay. um, I'm scared of heights. Right. But I did think maybe uh, it might be a nice idea, you know, in abstract, if I didn't think too hard about looking down and that sort of thing. Mm. But yes, I mean, if you were in a mountaineering situation and you were going up this cliff mm. and uh, suddenly you were about to you know, put some of those pegs in and it was a very dangerous situation, it would be really good to receive an alarm at that point. To crampons. Do it, you Cramp see. Crampons. I don't think I've ever had that. No. So carry on. I think that's what they call carry on. Then yes. Yeah, so you were you you were halfway up a cliff, and uh, you, you yes. So if you were halfway up the cliff and you're about to make a very dangerous move, and putting these little metal pins into the cliff, and yep. perhaps it was into a little bit of soft cliff. Mm. Soft cliff. Uh, then then the the government could send you an alarm to, to say you know beep 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 dangerous thing to do. What? However, if you're not in a dangerous situation, just having a cup of coffee in a cafe or something mm, like that, mm. um, having a macaroon, um, a cup of coffee, and then you receive this alarm that makes you splutter all over the place, well, that's counterproductive. Mm. So I, I can see that there's a benefit and a disbenefit. Yeah. So basically, your, your argument is it's fine if you're halfway up a cliff, uh, a soft cliff, 
and you've got an alarm. But if you were in a cafe eating a macaron or macaroon, then uh, that would not be uh, particularly uh, appealing to you. Well, I think you're being a bit too specific about it. Those were just examples. Right, OK. So I could think of lots of other things. Um, well, I mean, what about... Uh, do, say... really have, do I have to enumerate all these examples for yeah, you? Yeah, give I us another you, one, John. You, you get... give, give us another one, John. You're riding a bicycle. Am I? And no, no. Looks... No, no, I mean, this is the example. Oh, you sorry. You may be riding a bicycle, though I doubt it, considering no. what you were talking to me on this radio show. Yeah. But no, you know, let's consider for the moment that perhaps you're... One, mm-hmm. one, I don't mean the royal one, I mean, no one in a generic pronoun right. sense, yeah. is uh, cycling along a country road, right. and one thinks everything is fine. The birds are singing, the bees are buzzing, mm-hmm. and then there is a junction to the left of one, mm-hmm. as one is cycling along, mm-hmm. and unbeknownst to one, there is a Fiat 500 being dri- driven by a, a young man who's very irresponsible, it's always a young man, and pay no attention to the T-junction. Right. And you're about to be knocked off your bicycle. So you would... you get the, the, the alarm from the, the government, which would be very helpful. Yes, but the thing is, the alarm would just go sort of beep, 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 beep. It wouldn't tell you what was going on. And you might... Uh, we'd have to. St- well, I suppose you'd have to... St- you'd fill GT band, wouldn't you, to stop stop cycling and see what the alarm was about. And I suppose that would save your life. That's what you're saying, isn't it? That's exactly yeah. what I'm saying, Mark. I'm glad okay. you understand. Yeah, um, so okay. A lot of people wouldn't understand this line of reasoning, but, you know, yeah. you know I was a scientist. I was a um, quantity spare. What about if you're on your pogo stick? Because uh, you have mentioned in the past when you phoned in, you, you do uh, like to, to have a, the odd jump up and down on a pogo stick. Now, I'm presuming if you're on a pogo stick in a similar situation, mm. that would be harder, wouldn't it, to check the alarm? I don't think that would apply. Okay, why not? Well, because I think the alarm would just go off all the time because it's an inherently dangerous thing to do, and I I accept the the risk of that. So you're so you're talking about I would I would turn airplane or aeroplane mode off before I started that. So you're talking about an alarm that's very specifically just uh, alarm targeting you, just an individual. So the alarm would go off just for you on your phone if you were pogo sticking. Well, they do claim, don't they, that it's supposed to be geographically mm. um, specific. So if there's a, a danger in a certain area, uh, in Scotland, let's say, somewhere in Scotland, then mm. the alarm won't go off, let's say, in Beer Regis and Dorset, mm. and vice versa. So just make it more specific. So is Beer Regis a particularly dangerous place, then? I think it might be, yes. Mm. I think there are a lot of cream tea shops in that area, and I've always thought that cream tea is a bit... Well, it does. You know, it does attract the near to well, doesn't it? Um, what about? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. What about if there were, say, food shortages? Because you know, we've been in situations where there've been run runs on food and and things like that. What about if there was a toilet roll shortage, say, in your local, uh, well, Morrison's or or Sainsbury's or or other 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 supermarkets are available, as they say. What about that? And would you would you get the alarm? Would you like to be rush down and get yourself some toilet roll? I cannot believe, Mark, that you have used that as as an example. I mean, this is all to do with the COVID experience that we had. And in the early days, people rushed off to get toilet rolls all the time. Mm. I can't understand why anybody went and hoarded toilet rolls. I mean, of all things, you can use newspaper, you Mm. can use dock leaves from the garden. Why would everyone, you know, be absolutely desperate and frightened to go and do things like that? I don't know. So Mm. I wouldn't be bothered by that. I can think of much more useful things. You say food shortages. Now, Mm. that's another matter. If there was no bread in the supermarket, then a good old alarm in the ear holes would be a very good thing. So the alarm would sort of presumably say, beep, 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 uh, warning that the the stocks are dangerously low on on a slice of Hovis. Well, they like to advertise. A loaf of Hovis. The government... Although yes, actually, true. these days, perhaps they're, yeah, perhaps they're mm. allowed to advertise, aren't they? Aren't they? Who knows? I mean, by all sorts of people. Of mm? course, people are worried, aren't they, that the whole thing about the the alerts are going to be misused. You might end up with advertising on them. It's sort of alert to there's an there's an advert. That would be awful, wouldn't it? That would be a misuse well, of the, the whole system. You don't, no, just a minute. You're talking about the government here, mm. though, Mark. Does the government ever ever misuse anything? Okay. I mean, the government's the government, isn't it? That's true, John. That's uh, nice that you're so you're so trusting. That's good. Um, so I was being, I was being ironic. Oh, I, I see. I right. don't trust. I don't trust anything they do. Right. No. Okay. Well, actually, some things, I suppose. So, um, so okay. So it's good in some senses, and bad in others. I think is the exactly. gist of what you're saying, John. Is that right? Have I got you right? Mm, okay. Mm, okay. Mm. So, will Excuse you? Me, I'm drinking a cup of tea. 
Yeah, that's why I was saying mm, mm, okay. instead of yes. Well, it's yeah. funny because I've got my biscuits and you've got your tea. Mm. Mm. A uh, Sam tea, it's very nice. Pardon? Mm. It's called a Sam tea, it's very uh, nice. Okay. Okay, so let's say in future, of course, this was a, a, a sort of one-off because we all knew it was going to happen. But um, mm. so you're you're sort of you can't be keeping your phone on aeroplane mode, can you? You're going to have to just uh, presumably face the fact that you might get the odd alert. How do you feel about that, John? Well, that's all right as long as they're going to do it in the way that I say. I mean, I only turned it off yesterday. Uh, because I didn't want to get the generic one, because that was just a test. Mm. But if it's going to be specific to me when I'm in dangerous situations, then I'm I'm all for it, and I right. should be okay. making sure that the aeroplane mode is off. Uh, do you ride a bike? No, I don't. Right, I so. ride a, a unicycle. Oh, okay, so that could be useful in that situation with the old Fiat 500 or Fiesta. No, you're right. I'm, I I might actually turn it off for that. I might actually turn it on. Uh, yeah, yeah. As well, because a bit like the pogo stick situation. Mm -hmm. If I know that I'm going to be in mortal danger for a period of time, let's say half an hour, I shall turn it on for that period. But when I think it's well, oh, this is a, a perfectly reasonable thing to be doing. I don't expect any accidents. Then, of course, that's when you need it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right, John. Well, lovely to hear your thoughts. Uh, do you have a song for us to play? I do. Mm-hmm. Song by Booker T. Jones, please. All right, which one's that then? I can't remember. <laughs> We've got one. Let me have a look. Well, there's one called Sound the Alarm. That's appropriate. Do you fancy that one? I do. Yes, please. Yeah, oh. that would be a good one. All right, we'll have that one up for you. Um, would you like to? Uh, anybody I like to shout out for? Well, yes. Um, but can I first ask you a question? Because this is something that I often say, isn't it? Do you think that I used to dance to that one as a young man? Ah, yeah. Well, I, I wasn't sure because you couldn't remember it. So I wasn't sure whether it was something that you, you used to dance to or not. Or whether it was, in fact, you had such a drunken revelry dancing to this, you'd completely forgotten the, the title. So was this something you used to dance to as a young man then, John? It was not. You're quite right. No, I never used to dance to that or anything by P Booker T. Jones or Booker T. Jones, I I don't even remember what the name, name of the man is. Okay. All right, John. So it's well, just a random collection of names that came into my mind at the time. Oh, uh, okay. Well, look, luckily uh, that song does exist. We've got that out there ready for you uh, now. So, uh, yes, a shout-out for anyone. Maud. Maud, please. absolutely. Yeah. All right, John, lovely to speak to you, as always. Get your thoughts on the situation, the topical situation. And, uh, yes, we'll get, the, we'll get the, the, the song straight onto the virtual turntable now for you. Wonderful. Great show, Mark. Always nice to speak to you. Hope to speak to you next time. Thank you. Um, right. Hope to speak to you this time. Well, I can't say that because I have spoken to you this time. I've enjoyed it very much. Thank you very much for allowing me to express my opinions both for and against the National Alarm. Well, that's lovely to hear from you, John. Thanks very much and speak to you next time. Absolutely. Bye-bye, Mark. Bye-bye. Darren's Valley's Radio.